often joke that it's not hot service or Bible study or Friday night fellowship or what have you, unless at one time during our time together we quote something from an internet meme. So with that in mind, I ask that you pray with me as I preach to you from the gospel according to Antoine Dodson from the topic, Run and Tell That. Homeboy. Oh <laughs> if you're not familiar with who Antoine Dodson is, he, he's the, um, the young man who saved his, his sister from a rape, rapist. And when the news crew came, he promptly told the, the rapist, We're going to find you. Oh, you can run and tell that. Oh boy. So this text is uh, it's one of the more interesting stories in the Bible. Amen especially in the New Testament. We just don't see very many stories like this. It reads like a horror story. Right? It reads like a horror story. Man is possessed by demons, and he lives in a cemetery. And he's naked. And he just runs around in the strangest of places, and he strikes fear among the inhabitants of the town. It's a pretty freaky picture, isn't it? Mm. Strange picture. In fact, elements of this story have made their way into popular culture. Uh, who has seen The Exorcism of Emily Rose? Okay, good. It's, it's disturbing. But this story makes its way into that, that movie. It's an unusual and disturbing tale, and it's much grittier than the more palatable stories of Jesus healing the blind and the sick and the lame and raising the dead back to life. This account is a lot darker than those stories, and it has a much more sinister element. No wonder the people who witnessed it all were so terrified that they begged Jesus to leave them. I think any of us would have been scared, frightened, after witnessing something like that. Now, I'm not going to belabor or dissect the events of Jesus' encounter with this man. Countless theologians and Bible scholars, they pour over the account of the, Ger the Gerasim demoniac. That's what it's called in, in Bible literature, li literature and Bible scholarship. And you can go to the library and you can check out a number of books and you can take an in-depth look into this story. Suffice it to say, though, this was a man in bad shape, you know, having been possessed by a number of demons. I think you have enough problems if you're possessed by one. He had a whole gang of men, man. Amen. So he meets Jesus, and the demons in him aren't happy about that. And they beg for mercy. Demons beg for mercy. Interesting. And Jesus casts them into a herd of swine, and the herd promptly runs off the cliff. It's a story. It's a story. It's, it's, it's a wild story. And for me, the most remarkable part about this story is not everything that happens with the pigs and the man and the demons. It's what happens at the end of the account that, for me, is the most interesting. It's the most remarkable part of this story. When the people of Gerasenes essentially kicked Jesus right. out of the town, right. he got back on his boat and he started to return to Galilee. And the man formerly known as Legion he readied himself to go along with Jesus. He was going to go on the boat with Jesus. And I, it seems like the right thing to do, right? Somebody saves you from possession, literal hell on earth, from psychological and spiritual imprisonment. You want to follow them wherever they go. You want to show your devotion to them. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. I'm going to stick with you. You've done something amazing for me. I'm just, I'm just going to devote myself to you no matter what it takes. I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to be right by your side. Because it's the least that you could do. I could do for you saving me. It's not reasonable service. It's the least I can do. But instead of letting the man be a devoted tag along, Jesus had other plans. He sent him away. And he said, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. In other words, run and tell that, <laughs> homeboy. <laughs> and that's what he did. That's just what he did. The Bible says he went back to his hometown and told everyone in the city what Jesus had done for him. That's the part I think is the most remarkable part of this story. And it's the part of the story that I believe has the most 
to teach us. There are a few things we can learn from the conclusion of the story of the Gerasene demoniac. First, we must learn to leave our comfort zones. We must learn to leave our comfort zones. The easy thing for him to do was to get in the boat with Jesus and leave with him. That would have been the easy thing for him to do. There's no challenge in that. He would basically be beholden to whatever Jesus said or did for him. He would have been under Jesus' protection and guidance. He would have been around like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Around people who had seen things similar to what he had seen. Who were also saved by Jesus in some form or fashion. Here was a seemingly good community for him. It's a good community. A place where he could fit in and be miles away from the hell he had experienced for years. He would be away from the old faces and places that just reminded him of his turmoil, of his years of mental and psychological and spiritual captivity. No more constant reminders of his lunatic behavior. He wouldn't have to return to the scene of the crime. Being with Jesus would mean a fresh start for him and a safe haven for him. Something that he hadn't had in years. Church, I'm talking to y'all, church. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Many times, our inclination is to get in the boat with Jesus and stay there. We hold up in the safe havens of these four walls. And we cluster within our own faith, faith communities because we are afraid or unwilling to deal with the ugliness that is outside of it. Mm. You don't have to say amen. 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 No, you don't have to say it. Don't amen. say it because I told you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go back to where we came from. We don't want to return to the scene of the crime, so to speak. We don't want to engage those same people anymore who just remind us of how ugly we used to be. We want to be right here with Jesus under the covering of God's protect, protective wings. We're content to sing God's praises here. We're content to share our joys in the Lord here. But that's not what Jesus wanted or needed legion to do and is not what he wants or needs us to do. Jesus needed him to go back and tell the people what God had done. Jesus needs us to get out of the boat and go and tell everyone what God has done for us. Jesus needs us to run and tell that. The second thing we can learn, humble. <laughs> the second thing that we can learn from this is we must be prepared to embrace rejection. These were the very same people who kicked Jesus out of their town. They didn't just ask him to leave nicely. They begged him to leave. They didn't want any parts of this. Do you think these people would automatically be open to receiving what Legion had to say? Mm -mm. Mm. Would they not be apprehensive about it? Would they not themselves recall the many times they had seen this man running around the cemetery stark naked and raving out of, his, out of his mind? Were they not afraid of him at one time? Might they not still be afraid of him? Mm. This was seemingly not very fertile ground for what Jesus was asking him to plant, but that was the mission. Just tell them what happened. You don't have to convince them. You don't have to argue them down. They might not even be interested or amenable to what you have to say, but tell them anyway. Don't worry about who gets it or who doesn't get it. Run and tell it for those who will get it. Which brings me to my next and final point. We must do it for the other demoniacs who are just like we were. Somebody is currently dealing with the very same things that we are dealing with, that we used to deal with. Somebody is as possessed as we once were. Perhaps they're not taking up residence among tombs, but they're possessed with fear. They're possessed with anxiety. They're possessed with hopelessness. They're possessed with affliction. They need to see in us that salvation exists. Someone needs the hope that only your story can bring them. Someone needs to see that there is a light at the end of their dark tunnel, and that light is Jesus. Somebody needs to be pointed to the same Jesus who saved you. Otherwise, they 
two are doomed to a lifetime of hell right here on earth. We cannot in good conscience let that happen. Amen. Amen. We must run and tell that. Homeboy. If God has ever been good to you, you better run and tell that. Homeboy. If God has ever provided for you in ways that you could have never done for yourself, you need to run and tell that. Homeboy. If God restored to you peace after periods of personal hell, you better run and tell that. Oh, boy, girl. <laughs> God doesn't need you to formulate elaborate arguments for him. God doesn't need you to argue people into believing. God doesn't need your defense. God just needs your witness. God needs you to share with others what God has done for you. God needs to use your example to settle the heart of someone else he loves and assure them, too, that he'll come to their rescue, just like he came to yours. God just needs us to run and tell that. Oh, boy. Run and tell that for the people who need to hear it. Run and tell that for the people who are still left in their personal hells. Run and tell that to build up the community of believers who are suffering among us. Run and tell that so that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Run and tell that. Oh boy. Run and tell that. Oh boy. Run and tell that. Oh boy. Amen. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for what you did for us. Lord, there are too many testimonies right here in this room to count. You come through for us in big ways and small ways, in ways that everyone knows about and in ways that only we know about. And Lord, all you ask for us to do is to run and tell that. Run and tell others what you've done for us. So, Lord, help us not to shrink away from that assignment. Help us not to get nervous about sharing what you've done, worrying about whether or not people are going to accept it. Lord, just help us. Give us the God courage to just tell it. And, Lord, put in our path the people who need to hear it. Put in our path the people who are on the verge of losing all hope so that we can be the ones who you used to give them back their hope. Help us to be beacons of hope and expectation for people who might not be able to feel it right now. Lord, let us not ever forget what you've done for us. Let us not ever forget the many ways which you've come through for us. Let us not forget your power, Lord God. Lord, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess, Lord God. Even the demons that were inhabiting that man knew it. And Lord, let us not be afraid of it. Let us go out and tell the world what you've done. Help us, Lord God, to run and tell that. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us respond to this wonderful...